There we go. Okay, so this is uh, the project and it actually, uh, the initial discussions around uh, what we were trying to do uh, in, this, in this project uh, go back four years and we'll still blame Dean Bartles a little bit because he was involved from when he was at General Dynamics. But in any event, uh, first of all, uh, this was uh, a project that, that uh, had, you know, nine or ten partners, uh, but it was unclear exactly who could be the uh, entity that could push the thing forward. And so when I was standing there, the other nine people took one step back and I was left in front. So as a result, uh, I ended up becoming the principal investigator. And so it's all being run through University of Texas. But, you know, we have a bunch of big players here like General Dynamics, uh, like Emerson, National Center for Manufacturing Sciences, uh, American Institute of Chemical Engineers, Nimbus is a small company, uh, NIST, you know them, Praxair, you'll hear more about Praxair in a minute. Uh, Schneider Electric is another vendor that's been involved. Uh, Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition, which Jim referred to already, and then UCLA. So we have a, you know, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a private-public partnership, and again, the motivation that DOE had for getting into this business uh, was that uh, they looked at the large installed base of uh, uh, plants out there who, who, which, which are energy intensive and recognized that you know, if we could operate these plants better, then we had the opportunity to save a lot of BTUs. And so instead of saying, let's build the next uh, new uh, uh, solar panel or something like that, you know, they said, let's, let's look at this really big target. And so that's really been the direction we took. So four years ago, we, we sat down and formulated a plan. It took a while before they actually funded it. Uh, and now, as of essentially January, we've been really in the project uh, roughly two years. Uh, but, you know, the incentive for at least a few of these guys was the fact that the, the government uh, put some funding into it to pay for uh, some, uh, some significant uh, test bed kinds of experiences uh, at General Dynamics and Praxair. And again, I'll say a little bit more about General Dynamics, uh, and then Jesus will follow me and talk about the, uh, the Praxair part. Uh, Dean could have showed this slide, too. He was caught in one of the slides about supply chain. And, the whole idea is that, you know, everything, as Jim said, is more connected, and we have to really have a much better understanding of what's happening when we have disruptions, how do we react to that, and there's lots of benefits that, that, that one can, uh, can achieve. As a result of that, you can, of course, get better safety, fewer hazardous incidents, you know, we can go a little bit more in the direction of sustainability, as you see up here in the upper right-hand corner. And, but the point is that, that and, and also energy is a big part of this as far as like the smart grid or natural gas or whatever is, is really driving your, your energy situation. But again, aim for you know, more energy efficiency. So, so th there's a whole lot of ideas here, but again, it's, it's a vision that, that we had of what we wanted to achieve uh, within the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition and, and specifically this, this, this project, which is which is really like a sandbox, if you want to think of it, where we could try out a lot of ideas around smart manufacturing that we've really been talking about a lot, but you know, we really couldn't do that. Uh, the graphics here have been squashed down a little bit, unfortunately, as we went to this wider format, so I'm not gonna to try to explain everything that's going on there, but, but one of the key ideas here, as Jim already mentioned, is the notion of having this, this vendor agnostic uh, platform that would essentially allow the, the manufacturing community to be able to implement things a lot faster. Again, try to stay away from this idea of having everything so tightly integrated. If one piece uh, essentially failed on you, then you've got to sort of re redo the whole thing or you know, the, the key technical people went away, then you'd be in trouble. So the notion is more of a modular based system that you can basically get to this plug and play idea. Um, we wanted to figure out, you know, if we did it this way where you break down things into smaller pieces, that would this actually speed up how we could develop a, a smart application and essentially using, using a platform. So a lot of what we've been doing is really around developing the platform, developing the software, making some decisions around exactly what, uh, what components can we bring in. And again, not, not trying to say, okay, we're gonna write all of our own software. No, it's really, you know, let's take things that are out there, best of breed pieces, that we can essentially incorporate in here so that, so that we can 
again, you can, you know, if you want to change something, then, then it's, it's relatively easy to make that change. This also occurred, I think, uh, in a rather for, uh, fortunate time because, you know, we, we're now hearing, of course, a lot about how we use the cloud. And that, that, that was not in our thoughts four years ago. That was something that's come along since then. But we were able to adopt that technology, I think, to, to, as a way of, of really making a lot of things happen here. Jim also mentioned the notion of advanced sensors and, and uh, advanced models, you know, using control strategies, optimization strategies. I'll say a little bit about that in a later slide, but uh, a lot of, again, the, the development, I would say it's, it's basically, you know, one-third test bed, if you look at the sort of the, the, the budgeting of this, uh, running the test beds, instrumenting the test beds. Uh, one-third is basically some research around modeling, optimization, control, trying to improve that part of it. And then finally, a third of it is around the platform development. So, so we have these teams, and again, they're not all working in, 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 in isolation from each other. We're, one of our big issues is, you know, how do we integrate across all these different groups that are working? So the notion is that, uh, you know, Jim used the word marketplace, is that, you know, can we get the beginning ideas here around the notion of a marketplace where you know, software can be available there that people can pull out out of a library and be able to use it again, much like the notion of an app in your phone. And, you know, can we actually get this thing started? So that's, again, uh, it's, it's a demonstration project. It's certainly not, when we finish roughly a year from now, it's not going to be complete. It's going to be somewhere along the way in the journey towards actually achieving a lot of these, uh, these goals. So just to give you an idea of a couple of the uh, test beds, uh, the one on the left is the one that Jesus is going to talk about, which is a steam methane reformer furnace, uh, which is in Port Arthur, Texas. And the whole idea, though, is that the way you convince people that you actually have something that is commercially viable and, and is something that is, that is real that they can actually implement is to actually show that you can do this on a large scale, on a commercial scale. We picked the uh, steam methane reformer because, first of all, it's very energy intensive, uh, but, and it's a very large scale system, uh, but it is one that basically there's been very little emphasis on instrumentation and control in the past, so we felt like this would be a good demonstration. Uh, the second example was essentially a, a, an artillery manufacturing facility uh, in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania uh, at General Dynamics. So this is one that's instead of being a continuous type process, more of a batch or even discrete manufacturing that included, you know, forging and heat treatment, but also some, some CNC machines downstream that actually made the, the final product. So, so again, very interesting problems, both of them. And uh, again, you know, trying to attack both of these and be able to demonstrate that, you know, A, we can actually improve the operations uh, and also save energy use, which was one of the things that DOE was interested in. Um, those, the, the, the animation there is really something that Jesus is going to talk about. I'll say a little more about the general dynamics one in a minute. So a little bit about, more about the platform. Again, there's a lot, a lot of words on here that I don't really want to try to, to, to read to you. But the notion is, if you look at the uh, second uh, uh, gold uh, pillar there, uh, that, or block, that talk about composable apps and libraries. So the notion is that Composable means that we can actually have these, these individual modules that we can pull, pull together or pick or choose, depending again on if I'm going to model a different kind of process, then I'm going to want to bring in a different kind of modeling software. Uh, toolkits really refer to essentially the app, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, and, and basically, it's a, it's a smart uh, application of some sort that, that you can actually write uh, uh, software around. And then data services, again, the notion here, the philosophy is that, that basically we bring the, the data to the application instead of the other way around. Uh, workflow as a service, so again, a service-oriented architecture is, again, a key concept that's in here. Um, and I think the rest of it, uh, you know, security is the other thing that Jim mentioned. Uh, the fact that we were dealing with uh, one of the test beds being at a military installation uh, meant that we really had to satisfy their uh, secure data uh, requirements, and it was really quite a challenge, but I think the good news is that we figured out a way to, to make it all work uh, using something we refer to as a, a DMZ or a demilitarized zone. I guess that makes sense for, for an Army installation. 
uh, where you can actually figure out, okay, what things are, are going to be exposed to the outside world versus those things that are kept inside uh, within the installation. So the notion is that we want to, to try to work towards a commercial system, and again, that's, that's the, uh, the, the notion we're, we're still trying to do. Again, there's a lot of information out there that you can pull from, so we're not really taking the approach that, well, you know, non-invented here doesn't work. We've got to take the best of breed technology, make sure that it satisfies the, the, the open requirements that we wanted to, to achieve in the system. Uh, and again, the, the platform is really intellectual property, the way we develop it. Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, part of a DOE project, but in the end, the Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition, which is, has about uh, 40 members, is basically, in the end, the, the owner of the IP, and it's, we're the ones who are going to manage it and make it available. So, uh, you know, the notion here is that, that we want to, uh, you know, we've lost the headings of this, Jim, unfortunately, so, but in any event, uh, uh, you know, we want to, to you know, use uh, advanced computing. Uh, so uh, you'll hear later about the notion of using tools like computational fluid dynamics, but then using commercial software, such as is available from people like uh, ANSYS Fluent, to be able to demonstrate that. So again, testing the platform and its capabilities. So one of the things that I've heard from one of the people at this meeting uh, at one of the large companies, uh, he says, you know, the problem today with, with the existing uh, vendor offerings is if we want to actually uh, implement some kind of, you know, really advanced controller that we've, we've developed, perfected as part of our work, it's really hard to do that with the existing uh, platforms that are available to us. And so again, they think this approach is one that, that you know, has a lot of potential to help solve the problems of, you know, that they see uh, in trying to, to move their, their, move more into manu advanced manufacturing. Um, there is a, a really good website. Uh, I mean, first of all, if you ever want to learn more about smart manufacturing, you can just Google uh, Smart Manufacturing Leadership Coalition. You'll go to a website. There's a lot of information there. It also includes information about the project that, that uh, I'm not, I'm not going to cover today. Um, the notion is that we'd like to be able to show that, that when you do uh, essentially the second and the third and the fourth implementation of trying to implement uh, a different kind of software instantiation or an application instantiation, um, can you really save time? And again, so far we've been able to show that, again, using existing commercial uh, software packages brought into the platform, we've been able to, to to speed up things considerably. And so again, it's, it's something that's, I think, a worthy goal that we've been able to, to, to achieve. So uh, at the bottom there is the other thing that we're trying to show is that we can actually improve productivity and energy reduction. And actually, to its credit, the uh, uh, Department of Energy understands that, that you know, productivity is part of the issue. It's not just about, you know, if, if my goal is to save energy, uh, but then make really lousy products, and that's not going to satisfy, I think, the commercial realization of what we want to try to achieve. So getting the balance is really important. Um, just to give you an idea of, of uh, you know, modeling is something that we spent a lot of time uh, trying to uh, implement as part of this. Again, the uh, universities, the University of Texas and UCLA have been heavily involved with this, but also so of the, the two companies where the test beds are located. And, and so the notion is that, that, that in both of these applications, you know, we're going to try to get more information by using more sensors uh, and try to essentially take that information and be able to analyze it and take essentially real-time action off of that. Uh, and in some cases, uh, even though you can't really use them in real-time, we can use you know, high-fidelity models, such, such as computational fluid dynamics, in order to uh, give us better insight about you know, what kind of uh, reduced order models would be, would be more effective. So kind of in a nutshell, if you look on the left column and the right column of the two test beds, you can see some of the things, some of the features there that fed into essentially the modeling part of this. Uh, first of all, we used uh, 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 infrared cameras as a way of getting uh, the uh, 
in, internal temperatures of the steam methane reformer. Uh, there's a whole lot of possible uh, manipulated variables in a steam methane reformer. And of course, there's a lot of uh, sensors that one could actually install with, but of course your challenge here at the bottom, you see that you know, what you really like to do is figure out how do I have the minimum number of sensors and how do I have the minimum number of manipulated variables or, or automatic valves in order to save money, because that in the end is a, is a, is a practical realization. So, so we've done a lot of studies. The interesting thing is that we did not have uh, any uh, uh, automatic valves uh, uh, on the system, but rather we, we spent most of the funding on instrumentation so we could learn more but then we did manual adjustments in the valves to, to understand exactly what would be the, the effect of making changes and what benefit did that achieve. And through simulation, we're then able to take that information and, and extend it to you know, exactly how, how, can, how can we analyze this better. On the right-hand side is the general dynamics. Uh, in, the, in the specific case is, is the uh, uh, heat treatment furnace that they have. And one of the goals there is in addition to modeling, and this is like you have these parts, metal parts moving through uh, on a track through the furnace. So they go through essentially a temperature profile. And the question is, you know, by adjusting essentially the gas, the natural gas flow at different points along the way, can we actually achieve not only minimum energy usage, but also essentially the right kind of temperature distribution in the part so that it ends up becoming essentially uh, a desirable uh, final product. So just by doing this, uh, we were able to show that uh, and, and get through optimization and simulation that you could save about 8% of the natural gas usage that way. And then if you actually go back and say, well, if we didn't have a heat recuperator on the system and one of the furnaces did not, then uh, essentially that was installed as part of the, of the test bed. And in that case, you can actually get even, even more uh, reduction in natural gas, about 20%. So this one has definitely had, uh, I think, some, some, some good benefits from DOE's perspective. Okay, so uh, I think this is, yeah, so the last slide here is that, you know, just a summary of uh, that we have, uh, you know, this working uh, prototype of the smart manufacturing platform. And again, it's, it's achieving, I think, the results we want. And we still have another year to go on the project, slightly more than a year. And we think we'll be able to take this even further. And, and there are plans to actually take this beyond the two test beds that we have now and actually put it in some other test beds. So that's, again, something that SMLC will be working on. Uh, the notion that we have this flexible architecture, a secure environment, those things have been demonstrated. Uh, we've been able to do a lot of interesting things around advanced sensors, models, uh, controls, uh, in order to uh, you know, get the performance we want. And uh, you know, we've been able to benchmark the, the energy usage in the two test beds. And we've essentially now laid out a strategy for where we want to go with marketplace and commercialization. So with that, let me stop and I'll turn it over to Jesus who's going to talk more about the uh, Praxair testbed.